Now, if you have ever carved a pumpkin, you know how hard it is to make them creative. But one man has mastered the art. He's standing by with our Alex Steiniger. Hey, Alex. Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm over here with the one and only Matt Harper. Matt, it's so good to have you back again this year. You've had an entire year to sort of hone your skills, and believe it or not, I've been sort of practicing a little bit myself. Okay. And people probably want to know, what did, how did you even get into this? You know, um, I, I think originally I just started doing it uh, as like any, any parent would and just doing some triangle eyes and that kind of fun stuff. And, and I wanted to kind of see if I could do a little bit more. Right. And, and morphed into this. Well, and we actually have some pictures of some of the things you've done and you've definitely taken it to the next level. I don't know how you can get inspiration from a picture and then carve it into a pumpkin. It's unbelievable. So here's one, for example. Here's the Gandhi. Uh, and we have a few more. It's, it's crazy how much detail you can actually put into it. So how do you know what to carve? You know, I, I get inspiration from the pumpkin itself. I'll kind of look at it for a while, and depending on the any bumps or creases or stuff like that, I'll, I'll, I'll get a, vi a vision for what eventually can go in there. Then I'll, I'll stare at a mirror, actually, and, and if I can make some faces uh, that uh, will help kind of shape how this is going to en end up being. And that's typically my, uh, oh, I, with Trumpkin, that's a different one. That's uh, an inspiration by itself. Oh, yeah. Well, it's so topical right now. So I see what you're saying. You're saying that you kind of look at the pumpkin, and then it, the features kind of stand out to you. Sure, sure. Yeah, in fact, some of the more goofy or kind of oblong, weird-looking weird pumpkins are more fun to, to, you know, you see a lot more in them than just the standard round ones you typically get. Right. They, they make for a little bit of more interesting landscape to, to carve on. Right. right. If you've got a big bump, it can turn into uh, a tongue sticking out or an eye or something like that that would be otherwise not there. How artistic. And do you think anyone can sort of get into this, or do you have to have kind of like the Matt Harper mind? to kind Well, of you do. It? No. Uh, it, it, <laughs> takes, it takes a little bit of time. It takes, uh, in fact, I've been doing this over the years, and I took a look at a picture I did a few years ago, and it was, um, it was rudimentary compared to now. And what I, I, I would just say to all the viewers, if you try to get a um, kind of a semblance for a face, and then just take time. These are pumpkins. This is something that's uh, going to be you know, um, food in the desert for uh, javelina in about, you know, a couple of days after you make it. So it's, it's, it's temporary, but you can make mistakes on it. You can also have the entire other side of the pumpkin to work on. So just a lot of practice. Eventually, you get good at it. Right. So you have to kind of go in without having any fear. And now, obviously, you don't just do it with your hands. You have a bunch of tools. And this year, actually, you said you've added on a brand new tool. I did. And what and is that? Sadly, it's my reading glass. Oh. <laughs> I end up having to, to do this to really get into the detail. But yeah, I, I end up having to use reading glasses more, more and more, unfortunately. Yeah, but if it helps you, might as well use them. And really quick, in the little time that we have left, yeah. uh, and we'll continue carving our pumpkins, too, throughout the show, but tell us about some of the other tools that you have with you. Yeah, I, I start from big to small. The bigger ones kind of help pull the most amount of matter away. And then the smaller ones I have here, including this little knife, um, get all that fine detail in the corners of your eyes or creases and that kind of thing. So, and I even use little, little sanding blocks and Brillo pads to skin to Smooth make it look it like skin. I yeah. like that. And first, of course, you have to start by scraping it. And we've kind of started doing that with our pumpkins, right? right? Kind of to right. make a, a space for us to start our carving. Correct. Because you can't really just do it on the orange. You, you know, yeah, it's better to kind of have a blank canvas of kind of scraped, in my, my opinion, and then you then can start kind of getting more depth into the face. Definitely. Okay, great. Well, we're going to get started on these, and Matt and I will continue to work on our pumpkins throughout the show, so stay tuned to see our progress. Hey, welcome back. We're here hanging out with Matt Harper, the pumpkin carver, who has some more pumpkin carving tips for us. So, Matt, we're kind of on our way here, and I see that you have way more shreddings than I do, so I think I have some catching up to do. But uh, for those who might be wondering, you carve all these wonderful 3D pumpkins. What does it actually take to make them 3D? Just you got to think about how the the face is, and I, I do faces typically. You can do other objects, of course, but when you think about how your hu the human face is, the nose is the furthest thing out, so it's kind of the last thing you carve. The deeper parts of your eye, your side of your nose on on, on each side gives you more of a depth feel for it. Uh, but it's gonna it's it's really. Knowing that you're, the last thing you're going to carve is the nose, then you, you're typically on top of it from there. Right, because you don't want to destroy the nose, because then the whole look is gone. Right. Yeah. If you if you want the thing to have a big nose, I mean, there's there's a million d like variations this. you can have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so okay, we have a little bit of time, but once you once you carve it, how do you actually preserve it? A camera. It's about the best <laughs> okay, way to okay. do it. Uh, sadly, in Arizona, it dries out so fast, uh, and uh, maybe if it was a cooler day, you could get another day or two out of it. Uh -huh. But um, really, um, that's the only way I've found. One other thing you can do is take a, um, water and a little bit of bleach spray, and sometimes that kills the external if you haven't poked all the way through, and that might give you another couple of days. Great but. tip. All right, we're going to keep working on our pumpkins and our creations. We'll reveal them what they look like at the end, but for now, back to you, Tina and Heather. Now, throughout the show, professional pumpkin carver Matt Harper and Alex have been cutting, scraping, and sculpting their pumpkins into beautiful artistic creations 
or so we think. It is now time for the big reveal. <laughs> Alex, I'm, I'm putting you on blast because I feel like Matt maybe has helped you a little. Of course he has. He gave me the base <laughs> of it, and you know what? I made mine look a little worse to make his look better. Do so you want to do yours first? Let's do mine first. Okay, here's Alex's creation right, first. Here we go. Da, 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 da. Hey, that doesn't look oh. bad on camera. That looks pretty In good. Person, it looks pretty bad. But. All right, really? <laughs> Let's see. Now Matt's. I'm excited. Oh, oh. <laughs> that may make yours look Oh, my a goodness. Look, look at, at those, the detail. I know, those teeth. Look at the eyes. And Matt, you said there's actually a whole artistic process you go through, right? I mean, one day it looks good to you, but what happens the next? Yeah, I, I um, tend to obsess about it and try to get all the little details right. And I remember what a, a professor told me in college, and he said, look, art's never completed, it's just abandoned. So you have to learn to just kind of, okay, this is done. It's still just a pumpkin, so it's, uh, it's an easy one. Well, that makes me feel better. So. Yeah, yours yeah. is done, too. Well, Matt, what I heard you tell Alex is uh, you told him to put pupils in the eyes. Is that something maybe someone forgets? Yeah, it, in fact, just to add depth, the, the more the darker, the, the more you carve, the darker it is, and that adds depth. So the pupils are darker than, let's say, the nose or something, and that, and that just makes it look 3D. Well, what's impressive to me is all of the tools that are involved to make this whole process happen. Yeah. Alex, I was so impressed with yours, I have to say, but when he turned his around, I was like, oh, wow. I know. Uh, but you know what? A little more practice. You're going to have it. Exactly. Much better than last year. Yeah. The chili peppers helped me, and that was sort of <laughs> Matt's idea. So I guess this is basically Matt's pumpkin, but a worse version. So well, Matt will actually be carving live at Brian and Kelly's on Broadway just west of Rosemont today from 3 to 6 p.m. and tar tomorrow from noon to 3, so make sure you check out Matt. Uh, visit him also, grab a pumpkin, and get tips on how to do your own 3D creation this Halloween.